from the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network at Troy, Alabama's International University. This is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for April 26, 2018. I'm Paige Weeks. And I'm Lauren Harkson. Thank you for joining us this evening. Earlier today, students from the Sorrell College of Business showcased the projects they have been working on this past semester. I was able to see their finished work. Troy University's Bib Graves Hall was filled with sights, smells, and information from countries all over the world. The Sorrell College of Business hosted its Spring Business Research and International Trade Show, which featured students acting as economic developers and tourism directors for various countries. Today is our project, uh, our outcome project for our international management class that supports our mission of the College of Business to have globally aware and engage business students. Through this assignment, students were able to learn what it is like to interact and work with other cultures, even while working with one another. It's a way to also get students to work together with intercultural communication. So we have a, a domestic students working with international students. And so it really has provided a, a unique environment for our students to get together and, and do this type of learning. Students also learned about the marketing aspects of their assigned countries and what business opportunities are available. They learn about the GDP, they learn about what's it like to go work there, what, uh, what are products that we could export from Alabama there, or what, what are we going to import. Although the project is for a class assignment, the experience and knowledge that students gain from the project can offer them an advantage later in their career. The employer asked, what have you accomplished? Well, I put on a trade show for a country. I was literally hired by my faculty member to present that country in its best light. The student's work was also judged by representatives from the Alabama Development Office. With the president's new tariffs on foreign steel and aluminum coming into effect, people are wondering if this America first mentality is good for the economy. Last night, the Manuel H. Johnson Center for Political Economy held a lecture on the subject. Nathaniel Rodriguez has the story. Guest speaker Mark Perry spoke on the negative effects of tariffs Thursday night during the Johnson Center for Political Economy's annual BBNT lecture. According to Perry, President Trump's new tariffs on foreign steel and aluminum don't help the American consumer, but rather domestic producers. The winners are the U.S. producers that are now protected from competition, like sugar beet producers. But then we have the losers. There's going to be job losses in other industries, and the consumers are going to have to pay higher prices for a lot of products. They'll have less to spend on other products. But should another country retaliate with its own tariffs, Perry said the producers could also face consequences of their own. We'll restrict some of their products coming in or impose tariffs. They'll restrict some of our products going into their markets. And so U.S. manufacturers and U.S. producers, including U.S. farmers, are very concerned that if a trade war escalates, that then they're going to lose a big share of their market. So if tariffs are so bad for the economy, why do politicians impose them? Well, according to Perry, it has nothing to do with economics. The main goal of a politician, especially in Congress, where they get elected every two years, their main goal is to get reelected. So when they're looking at trade protection, they, they look at that as a way for them to generate political support without losing a lot of political support because consumers are so disorganized. As of April 24th, around 2,400 companies have applied for exemptions from the new tariffs, according to a report by the Boston Globe. Nathaniel Rodriguez, Troy Trojan Vision News. The Johnson Center holds the BB&T annually for its students. Having a sexually transmitted disease is no game, but Trojan Outreach used a game to help spread the word about STDs on campus. Lamaria Sampson has the story. Spin the wheel to see your fate. The members of Trojan Outreach says having unprotected sex is like playing roulette. So today basically we're talking about STDs and um, the risk of getting an STD. On, um, and basically we're talking about not using protection is like spinning an STD roulette wheel of what you might get. Students were asked to spin the wheel and whatever it landed on, they were presented with a brief summary of what that STD is. For students wanting to know their status, Brianna Maples tells students where to go and what steps to take to get tested or receive treatment. A good thing to know for Troy University students is that you can always visit the Troy Regional Medical Center and they can test you for an STD, receive treatment, 
have the steps of where to go from there. After students were educated on the different STDs, they were given a heart-shaped cutout and a condom to seal the deal. I feel that um, learning about STDs is important because um, in the United States, it is a big factor that not a lot of people want to talk about because it's such a private situation, but it's important to know what these STDs are, um, what the treatments or cures uh, you can receive for them, and um, the importance of having safe sex. Trojan Outreach is a peer education program that provides presentations, workshops, and peer intervention for Troy University students. Lamaria Sampson, Troy Trojan Vision News. Trojan Outreach encourages anyone who thinks they may have an STD to be tested by a medical professional. The University Activities Council gave students an opportunity for a little outdoor fun last night. Students spent the night zip lining in the dark. Brianna Jones has the story. As a part of a tradition, Troy University impacts students visit the home of adventures, better known as Camp Butter and Egg. Wednesday night, students were invited to come for a zip line in the dark. Well, you know, every year we have the impact students come out here for during the summer, so this is a good opportunity for those people that want to do something different. Zip in the dark is different. Uh, we only do it a couple, three times a year. Uh, we do three zip lines. One, which is a relatively easy zip line, and then five through the woods is pretty dark. And then number nine is over the wood, over the over the lake. So we, we enjoy doing this. And uh, besides the zip in the dark tonight, they'll have an opportunity to do the climbing wall and also play laser tag. You know, Susan and I both retired from Troy State. I retired from Troy State, and Susan retired from Troy University. So uh, we both, in, and I was in Student Affairs Division for years, both of us were. So we, we liked working with students, and this is a good opportunity for those students that may have a, you know, a fear of heights or doing things different. This is something they probably never had an opportunity to do, uh, so we, we like giving them that opportunity to zip in the dark. Uh, so we enjoy, we enjoy seeing them go through there and having fun doing it. One student reminisced on her first experience at the camp, and she did not forget to use her sound effects. My experience at Camp Butter and Egg has been really fun. The first time I came, my favorite part was zip lining because you got to go through the trees. It felt like you were on adventures, like, <laughs> but my, also my favorite part was going over the water because it's like a little alligator in the water, and it makes you seem like you're really going through the woods and the wilderness. I felt like I was Jane. And Pierce gave some advice to any newcomers. Well, if you've never been to Butterneck Adventures, we have a lot of things to do. If you're scared of heights and you really you want to try to get by it, we'll work with you. We're not going to push you down the zip line. We want to give you an opportunity to try it. Brianna Jones, Troy Trojan Vision News. The UAC's next event will be Spring Fling next Tuesday on Tailgate Terrace. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. Good evening and welcome to your Trojan Vision Sports. I'm Antonio Reese. Starting things off at the softball complex, the Trojan softball team hosts the number 23 Mississippi State Bulldogs in a midweek game. Nick Brooks has the details. The Trojan softball team welcomed the 23rd ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs Wednesday night where they broke out of New Jersey with the hashtag no one fights alone on the back to support cancer awareness and Mississippi State player Alex Wilcox. And head coach Beth Mullins says this was more than just another midweek matchup but a life lesson for her team. Anytime you can play a game that reminds your kids that, you know, we play for something so much bigger than ourselves. And, you know, Alex is from right, right down the road, and I've known her for a long time, and this whole community has known her for a long time. So it was a really good opportunity to kind of support her and her cause. The Bulldogs kept the Trojans off the base paths until the fifth inning when infielder Madeline Porter singled up the middle. I mean, we just worked really hard at the plate, and being able to finally make an adjustment to get a hit for the team just kind of fired us up a little bit, but we still have to work hard, keep going back to practice, and just keep on working. Pitcher Claire Graves entered the game and held the Bulldogs to one run over the final three innings. I basically just stuck to my game, just kept pounding the zone and mixing up speeds with the changeup. That's just like what I do. I keep the ball low and throw that changeup in there to keep them off balance. It was a tough loss for the Trojans, but seeing the high caliber pitching has given them confidence going into the weekend series. You want to be playing your best softball at the end of the year, and when you're facing good competition, it's not going to do anything but make you great. So we've got another top 25 team coming in here this weekend in Texas State, and they've got a really good pitcher that's going to go against us too. So, you know, to face good pitching before you're going to see good pitching is key. 
The Trojans are not backing down with the conference leading number 21 Texas State Bobcats coming to town. We're just kind of prepared as we always do, just show up to practice every day, ready to work hard and get better and just stick to our game, don't get outside of ourselves no matter what the name says on the other team that we're playing against. We're just going to play our game, it doesn't matter who we're playing, we're going to keep playing Troy softball. Nick Brooks, Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. The team will look to bounce back as they play host to yet another ranked opponent as they host the number 21 ranked Texas State Bobcats for the final home series of the season this weekend. A doubleheader will be played on Saturday and Sunday will be Senior Day. Seniors Erica Davis, Carly Kaler, and Cassidy McDilda will be honored. Moving along to the ballpark, the Trojans baseball team is looking to redeem themselves after dropping a one-run contest against the Alabama Crimson Tide. The team will host the conference opponent. UT Arlington in the three game series. Head coach Mark Smart discusses how the team is preparing to go into the weekend. The hard thing about playing UT Arlington, we've yet to win a series against their team. Four straight years, they have won every series two to one. So I have challenged our team really before the season started that we're going to win this series. We are going to beat UT Arlington and I, I sure hope we do. First pitch of the weekend series is set for tomorrow at 6 p.m. The Trojans track and field team are on the move as they have traveled to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to compete in the Penn Relays. 29 student athletes are set to compete in the meet for the Trojans. This meet is the most prestigious of its kind, being since 1895, it has been annually ran, making it the oldest and largest track and field competition in the United States. The Trojans will encounter several different levels of competition, ranging from high school to college to the U.S. track and field team itself. Well, ladies, with all Troy Athletics in play this weekend, I wish them the best of luck. Yes, I'm really excited to see um, everyone play, and I hope we can get some wins. And I know you mentioned this is a really big time for the track team, so go Trojans for them, and I hope everything works out. Go Trojans. Thanks. 